Bushtroopers.com here. Okay, I'm uh, basically summing up the weekend. Learned a lot of medical stuff and uh, got the videos that I'm going to put it all together for you. While I pack up, I got some thoughts. I just want to, you know, get out there. One of the reasons I'm, I'm doing this project and, you know, the Preparing to Survive project is, or the, the, the thought pattern behind it is, is taking steps backwards. I don't want to just jump right into you go from, you know, living in an urban environment and everything's there and you just live your life normally to all of a sudden, wham, living in, you know, I'm building my little snow shelter or my little whatever lean-to from trees and crap and I'm eating bugs and I'm just right out there. That, that's, that's a dramatic shift. If you're thinking of doing a project like that, I mean, you watch Survivor Guy or Cyber Man and, and all these other shows. I love them. I watch them too. But just to jump right into that, that's, that's a huge emotional shift for somebody as well. A lot of people just go, yeah, no thanks. I take steps backwards. If you live in an urban environment and you've never gone camping, and I'm talking park your car, take your crap out of your car, and your car's right there, your tent's right there, your little fire pit, your picnic table, learning your Coleman stove. If you've never done that, then you shouldn't be here doing survival stuff. You need to go camping, right? You, that's your first preparation is to take a camping trip. That takes a step backwards. Now you're not working with, you're working without electricity. Now I'm not talking a motor home because that's like a cottage, right? That, you've got all the amenities. Camping, a tent, a Coleman stove that you have to pump up, right? And, and burn and cook fuel and carry your water in. It's in a jug and it's sitting there and the car lifted it and whatever. But that is a first step. You don't have running water, you don't have electricity, and you are sleeping on an uneven surface of the ground. You may have a good air mattress, because I have a great air mattress, because I like my comfort. So, but I still sleep on the ground. It's like, could be slanted, could be on an angle. If there's a rock, we move that anyway. But these are things you need to think about. That's the, the concept behind it. So you, you start taking steps backwards. That's what I did. I camped out of my car. Right? Then I joined the Army. You know, I was in the Army and, and I learned you rough it there and I was thrown in by fire. But the Army's a different mentality again because you're just doing things differently. Um, and again, you have resupply. It's nothing like doing this. There's not a lot of survival. Yeah, you can do special forces or take certain survival courses. But the average soldier doesn't do it, and uh, it's not even set up for the average soldier to do that kind of survival mentality stuff. So eventually I moved into, I learned a canoe. Now part of this project I'm going to take a canoe course, but I know how to canoe. I know how to canoe in flat, open water, um, you know, like a lake, I can canoe down a stream. If there's white water, forget it. You don't see me canoeing, right? I, I pull the canoe out and I go and I carry it along the shore because I don't feel confident in my skills. Now, when I've done this program, I will feel confident in my skills because I would have practiced a lot of those things. So that's, again, what I'm working towards. Now, you should be doing the same thing. Now, I backpack. Now, the Army forced me into backpacking. The infantry kind of does that to you. So you carry things on your back. But with the Army, you have resupply. You've got food. You only carry a day or two's worth of supply of food and water because the supply truck's coming behind you. When I started camping, we didn't have that. So yeah, I carry a water purifier, but if I'm going camping over across land, I have to pack more water. And normally I canoe, I pack very little water when I'm canoeing because guess what? Duh, I'm canoeing, right? <laughs> I'm floating in water. So you just, you know, you purify it and you carry on. So I, I do that. Food, you gotta carry all your food, make sure you have enough for snacks, whatever else. Again, I like my creature comforts, so I'll spend the extra, you know, take some extra food and do that sort of thing. So these are, that's the mentalities. Walk your way backwards. You start off camping out of your car, doing that sort of thing. You move into maybe backpacking. 
you could get out there and realize, this sucks. I hate the bugs. I hate everything else. It's not the concept. If you're preparing to survive an urban situation, you're going to be camping. What do they do? All the people are gathered together. What's the first thing the Red Cross does? They put a bunch of tents out and everybody goes to the tents and you have to shower. They put in these shower facilities that you got to use where it's not pumped in water. You're carrying it. You got jobs you have to do. You know, that's just the way it is. You got to go. There's things, you know, you're, you're going to meal lines. You're changing your lifestyle completely. If you want to prepare to survive, you need to prepare. You need to go do that sort of stuff. You have to live in a tent. You have to sleep in a tent and realize, okay, this sucks. You have to be out there where there's no lights, right? When, you, when we were just talking with some of the people that were here, they dealt with a, a person where, you know, she said, oh, I camp all the time, but she camped at a campground where they had a light. There was always light. When she got out here and there was no light, she freaked. She panicked. She said, there's no light. So she obviously didn't camp all the time. She had no idea about camping. There was always electricity. You need to go where there's no electricity. Now, a lot of campsites offer that. Where you pull in, and they don't have any lights, not even little pathway lights. You get the car driving by, but you know overall you get a light. You get your Coleman lantern. You can't get that going. You got a campfire. You got your flashlights, whatever. Take those, but eventually work your way backwards. I used to carry like a pile of flashlights on me. I got this, got this. I started carrying less and less. You know, in the car I had the big flashlight. Well, you don't carry a big flashlight when you're camp, when you're backpacking. You carry a headlamp. That's pretty much all you use. You have a regular light in your hand, but you find it's kind of useless. So I just try not to carry that anymore. Now I have a backup. It's a light that winds up, but it's got a radio on it, and it's so I can hear weather reports. And, um, you know, it's got an emergency beacon on it, so that's kind of handy. I can put that on the shore, and, you know, it's an emergency beacon. It can be seen. So that's the only reason I have that. Now, I don't even have it on me because I don't carry it a lot of times. So, well, well, here I don't because obviously what I'm doing. But it's just things, again, to consider. So work your way backwards. Don't just jump into a survival course and say, woohoo, I'm off, right? It doesn't work. Okay, so there's a theory and there's a concept of take your time, get it right. Dave Hensman, bushtroopers.com here. Thanks for watching. I really do appreciate it. Tell people about it. Please subscribe to the channel. Do the thing, do me another favor and, you know, check out my website. Get on there. I need lots of hits. I want people to see this thing. The more people that get on it, the better I can do, right? And I can start adding stuff up. So I really do appreciate you guys watching. And, uh, you know, get, and fire me emails. Let me know. Let me know what you think, okay? All right, appreciate it. Take care now.